Yeah, welcome to HiFi Apps. My name is Johann Gauss. I'm physicist from Berlin and this video is about the player with digital room correction I've written. So I show a sort of short manual uh, how to start the player. You have at the first place to measure your room and I show some possibilities to do this. I think in most cases people have just an tablet with a built-in microphone which is connect connected via uh, Bluetooth to their stereo. I've built the same setup here uh, with a difference that it's quite a high-end stereo. So from a simple Bluetooth receiver it goes to a LUM 1.2 reference amplifier uh, to a Martin Logan ESL9 electrostatic speaker pair. Those speakers here are not involved in this video. Um, from there I change from the built-in microphone to this uh, USB microphone. Um, this one is from Nubat. I think there are lots of similar uh, USB measurement microphones in the region below uh, 50 euro. And after that I change to an external sound card which is quite often used from Steinberg uh, which is connected to an uh, high-end uh, measurement microphone in Earthworks in the region of 1000 euro. So first I'll start uh, with a Bluetooth measurement and for that I start first the screen recorder here. Okay, now sh should work. Now from here I start my app. Uh, you have this welcome screen to start the measurement. Uh, from the welcome screen I'll show a short dialogue about speaker placement or you go to this main menu, start the measurement, then I don't show this dialogue. First thing is to give the measurement a name. Um, I call it something that I remember that this was a built-in microphone. And now I have to connect the microphone because at the moment it's connected to the um, screen recorder. Uh, for that you can select here this mic and speaker connection and look which one, which one is connected. When selecting this I ask uh, the Android system uh, for speaker connection. You see it was enough uh, to select it. You see it here on the volume unit meter. Uh, on this occasion I can test if the speaker is connected and the volume is okay. Uh, you can do this as well here in this test signal thing. This may be useful if you have a subwoofer which has to be switched on automatically by a signal. So from here you start your measurement. The microphone is down here. Hmm. Okay, and if you look at the impulse response, it looks quite um, dirty. Uh, this comes from the slightly different sampling uh, frequencies. This Bluetooth receiver has one freq frequency and the tablet has another one. Uh, they are both cheap, so uh, they are some hertz different and you get this funny interference effect. But anyway, uh, I manage to get some reasonable phase and frequency out of this dirty values. I mean, uh, it's more or less my job as a physicist to get reasonable results out of dirty measurement results. So from here you usually should start a second measurement uh, to cancel some errors here for the demonstration. I go directly to the player. Now it calculates some example filters which are described here in this case in German, in the English version in English. And now I could start uh, some of this license-free songs. And in the mo first moment uh, you need to give it some time, so convolution is really something to calculate. Later if you have the convolved version it's um, saved and if you have some songs in the queue they are convolved in the background. Yeah, 
Next step is to use the measurement microphone. So I go back to the main menu, plug it in, start the second measurement. And because this is from Nubat, I call it NU. Look if it's connected in the right way. USB audio, and yeah, if I touch it, it works. Play is okay as well. And if you look here, uh, now this microphone at least got the deeper frequencies as well. Uh, the impulse response is quite comparable. And I can start the player again. And in the next step, uh, I disconnect the Bluetooth receiver and connect this Steinbeck external sound card. Okay, so now we can start the measurement with the Earthworks microphone. Look again if I've got the right microphone. Okay, you see that the impulse response is now in time, uh, but anyway, the frequency response is not so different to the filtered one with a bad impulse response. I go back to the main menu now to compare the three measurements. To do this, I take the filter menu. By the way, here in the bottom left, you can start a guided tour if you are new to the app. Uh, but in this case, I just take one filter randomly to edit because I'm not interested in the filter. I'm interested in the measurement used for the filter. In fact, the three measurements used for the filter. So here's the main page for the filter. You can make listening tests. In this case, we want just to see the frequency response. And for that, I start the editing. So now we have here the three frequency responses with two channels each. The topmost uh, can be seen as the one with a missing bus, so the built-in microphone. I can use this information button and remove the check mark. Then you can see this. The second one, the most flat one, is obviously the Earthworks. And if I switch it off and on, I can see this directly. If we compare the three measurements, we see the ones with the built-in and the cheaper measurement microphone are not so bad. Just if we look at this issue at 70 Hz, uh, it looks quite similar. There's obviously a resonance in the room, uh, which must be treated in a way. And it's by far enough uh, to use the built-in microphone to find this. And the same, if you look closer, is valid for other local things, like here on 200 Hz resonance and all that. So, in fact, my, my thought was that the measurement microphone is fine, but not everyone has one. And if you look at the local behavior, it might be enough uh, to have the built-in microphone. So I made further uh, investigations, me measurements. And you can see the result in the HiFi apps page. At the end, the outcome was uh, this is true, but only up to, say, 3000 Hz. At higher frequencies, just the dimension uh, of the cell phone or whatever 
go in the dimension of the wavelength and you get some funny reflections and the results are no longer reliable. But in lower frequencies it's not so bad what you get from built-in microphones uh, so long you only look at local behavior. Then the next question is it might be enough to look at the local behavior if you have a correction which looks only at the local behavior and maybe it's enough to have a cor correction which looks only at the local behavior so if you want to get rid of this resonance at 90 hertz you must not be interested what is what's happening at 3000 hertz so what i did next is to write an algorithm which looks just at the local behavior of the frequency response that's not so difficult uh, i just made a very very strong smoothing over several octaves and took that as a sort of normal zero so to say and then i took the differences between sharp resonances and this let's call it local zero and made a correction on this and it turned out that is not too bad uh, it's even partly better than uh, other corrections because the sound remains as it is it just improves because the sharp corrections are treated in a way and the inequality between the two channels can be treated in a way but the global behavior uh, which might be intended in the way it is remains as it is so in fact i introduced something i called strengths which you can see here in this range thing the slider down here and if i change the strengths to one i get the normal uh, digital room correction you must not understand this in details but i get this correction curve which is oriented on the um, target curve and if i change the strengths to zero target curve doesn't matter anymore i get a correction curve which is oriented at the global average of the speaker system so the sound remains as it is but it improves so the facet is if you don't have a measurement microphone reduce the strengths uh, correct the global behavior by ear and just correct the small fluctuations which is uh, much more effective and if you have a measurement microphone you are free to choose the low strengths leave the sound of your system as it is maybe it's intended or to a classical digital room correction with high strengths oriented on a target curve yeah okay that's the first overview for usage of the player thank you and goodbye